presentation will be from uh, Nicolas Val uh, from um, uh, the DKFZ working on radiotherapy optimization and his uh, group leader. And uh, once more, I would like uh, to say publicly that uh, we are grateful uh, because um, all the matrad preparations, all the master classes uh, preparations are uh, due to him and, of course, uh, Hans Peter Wieser. Uh, please, uh, uh, Niklas. Yes, um, thanks a lot, um, Jota, for the uh, nice introduction. Um, so, what um, I'll be uh, telling you now is um, about the open source software that um, we are going to use during the hands on sessions that we have um, from Monday to Thursday. So, this afternoon, like after. These, this, this introduction and the evaluation form and the next break. This will not be the, really a hands-on session, but rather a how to install it and get everything running session. Um, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will use um, Matrat to present some, let's say, still simplified treatment planning problems to you. And um, um, since Matrat, is a open source dose calculation and treatment planning toolkit. So we're talking about how to um, do treatment plans on the computer before a proton or a carbon ion or a photon beam even sees a patient, um, which is not entirely true because there needs to be an image made. So the, there will be photons seeing the patient before, but um, we come to that um, at some other point. So as um, let me check if this works. Yes, as um, Jutta said, I work at um, DKFC. Um, and uh, this is actually a presentation given by um, me and Hans-Peter Wieser, who also was at DKFC, is now at um, Ludwig Maximilians University Munich. Um, but he was heavily involved in the matter development while um, he was at DKFC. Okay, so then let's let's start. Maybe just what this presentation will be about is not kind of, it will contain advanced things about Matrat. So it will just give you an overview about Matrat, about what Matrat is, what's the motivation for it. There might be some advanced information that you don't know yet, depending if you are an undergraduate study student um, or, or basically your, your, your state in your academic um, career. Um, so if it's like your first contact with particle therapy today, you, you might not um, directly understand everything that is shown. This is just like, let's say, an overview about MATRAD, but you will learn all these things about planning and dose calculation and so on, hopefully, within the next days. But okay, so before starting with MATRAD, we asked ourselves um, a question about treatment planning in general. So. So what do we do while, um, while um, planning a patient treatment and how can we do research there? So the first thing to know is that treatment planning, I said it before, is a very computerized process. So everything takes place on the computer. You cannot just, let's say, put a patient on the table and then start experimenting to see what the best treatment would be. So you need to simulate this beforehand. You need to think about it. Um, I will go into detail on how treatment planning works tomorrow, actually, on in, in, in the um, morning. Um, but that's kind of the basic thing. Everything is done on the computer. Um, and this includes that you simulate the dose that the patient receives and optimize it for the patient anatomy. So you really personalize the treatment. Um, the problem there, if you want to do research or you want to um, teach people is that um, the whole, all the systems that are available are commercial solutions or in-house solutions. So basically, for example, DKFZ had its own treatment planning system. Uh, it was called, um, it was a combination of two softwares that were called Virtuos and Conrad, um, which were developed in-house and they were super complicated. Like one person knew what was going on like just to exaggerate it, but um, that's the situation. Or you have like a commercial solution 
the primary examples at the moment are like the vendors that create the 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 machines. Um, they also have usually systems or software that that um, that you use to operate and plan. Or um, one other, let's say, more freelance example there is the Ray Station, um, a very modern treatment planning system that has um, that is uh, widely used. The problem there is they might give you like scripting interfaces or something to, to do research there. Um, um, but when you really want to work at the core of the methodology, you don't get access to what the program is actually doing. It's very difficult because of course that's IP of the, of the commercial vendor and uh, they don't show you how their optimizer works or how their dose calculation algorithm works in detail. They give you a white paper and that's what you have to work with. So you can do maybe a treatment planning study for research, but you cannot write a completely different um, dose engine. So what we need is like really accessible and flexible software. And um, that's basically when the previous group leader of the radiotherapy optimization group in, at DKFC said, um, wait a minute, I have so many scripts um, that do all these kinds of stuff, like, like a script for optimizing those, a script for calculating those, a script for looking at a CT. Why don't I combine them and put them into, into, into MATRAT and put them all open source on GitHub? So, and just to give you some examples of what could be ideas that you want to research in, in, in treatment planning that you can do with a commercial system that easily is, for example, the whole thing that is quite relevant for particle therapy, the biological optimization, when you want to change how you compute biology, um, um, biology weighted dose and so on, that's not so easy when you just have access to the black box system. Um, or you want to change um, other optimization um, parameters will come to that tomorrow, then you really cannot do this um, that easily with a commercial system. You need to switch around between your custom solution and then you need to simulate something in the commercial uh, solution and so on. Another example that I worked a lot with is probabilistic dose calculation. For example, you do not compute dose, you compute expected values and variances or something like that. The whole engines there are not made for this and you cannot access them. So you really need the low level access and that's where MATRAT comes into play. Okay, so what is MATRAT? Um, MATRAT is, um, or we describe it as a toolkit for three-dimensional intensity modulated treatment planning for photons, protons, and carbon ions. So that's the main modalities you can do there. You learned today already that there's like also other ions. You can use helium. HIT also has oxygen, oxygens available. You could use electrons, um, um, but these are not included. So we basically focus on three these three modalities within MATRAD, but it's not that difficult to extend it. So it's almost entirely written in MATLAB um, and open source. So MATLAB might seem like not the first choice for, for many of you. I think at the moment, the language uh, for the machine learners and, 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 um, and so on is, is mostly Python or R or something like that. But in the medical physics community, MATLAB is, is, is quite big and all of our scripts were basically in MATLAB. So that was the choice. And um, in principle, you don't need a commercial MATLAB license. You can also do stuff with new Octave, which is kind of a, a clone that can interpret the MATLAB uh, programming language, but it's not as powerful as the um, standard solution. Yeah. And um, what it implements is, let's say, well-established radiotherapy algorithms for research and education so that you can do the basic things, that you have access to the basic algorithms but can extend it. That's the goal. It's not, we do not like work on Matra 24 seven to, to basically put in the newest uh, paper um, or the, the, like the next gen optimization algorithm because that's basically what we want to enable researchers to do. We don't want to basically provide them with a, with a final treatment planning system so that they can produce treatment plans for, for um, the clinic. Um, and actually MATRAT is, and that's something I really need to stretch to all of you. Um, it's not a, a, a clinical treatment planning system. It's not a medical product. So you can never create treatment plans with that for a patient. 
It's only for research and education. So not that someone uh, gets ideas here. Um, so, um, yes, about some more properties for Magdrat. The main property is open source. Um, from the code, we have open source patient data and open source machine, like base data for the dose calculation that mimic a machine um, on GitHub. Everything is under the GPL license. So GPL v3, that means that kind of when you use Matrat and you modify it, um, you need to basically always publish the source code with it and your modification so that this always stays open source and not starts to get basically somewhere integrated into some commercial solution and, 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 and vanishes in, 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 in some corner. So also this license here underlines because these GPL license always have a no warranty clause and everything that you cannot use it clinically. Okay, so what can it do? Otherwise it has a graphical user interface with which we will work a lot during the hands-on courses. It has an optimizer interface, the very um, renowned optimizer. I think when it first came out, the IP opt optimizer even was like in, in some big newspaper in the US. So which can do nonlinear constrained optimization of the dose. How this works, I will explain tomorrow um, to some extent, not, not completely. Um, it can to a limited degree import DICOM files and some standard binary format. It also can export, but for now it will not export you, for example, an RT plan from DICOM, because we do not want to enable people to create RT plans, import them into some system they have, and then use it um, clinically. Um, and as I said before, if you don't have MATLAB, there's some compatibility with Octave. The user interface, the graphical doesn't work. So that's why I also um, didn't uh, tell in the instructions that you should use Octave for that because the graphical user interface doesn't work. It's much more difficult to get it running in Octave. Um, maybe it will in the future. And we also have a downloadable standalone. Um, thankfully, uh, MATLAB comes with, or there's a toolbox for MATLAB that allows you to compile your programs into, into executables. So you can run it without a MATLAB license. So why do we do all this? Um, I guess um, there are many points. Um, in general, we would like to support open science when possible. So, and we want to make science reproducible. And sometimes these black box algorithms, when people start to script in this and so on, um, nobody can reproduce the results at, at another institution that easily, but here in principle, you can just push something to your GitHub repository, write a paper, say that's where I dumped the code and here you can reproduce everything I did. And of course, education is very easy because I can really, we can really show people how methods work. We can work with the code. We can, um, we can uh, create problems um, um, for teaching uh, like we want them. So, so that's also a, a nice benefit there. Okay, so the whole macro thing started actually in 2015 and we are quite happy with how it um, like kicked off our progress. So at the moment we have already over 100 forks on GitHub. That means other basically copies of the code that develop macro and use it. Um, um, so these are like really people who, who know how Git works, who know how to work with code. Um, there are also a lot of um, institutes um, that somehow confirmed uh, are working with MACRAD. This list is not complete. Um, I think it changes uh, continuously and I need to add institutes. I'm sure we have all content, quite all major continents covered, including Africa. I think there are one or two users already that that confirmed I need to update that list, um, but it's like such a continuous effort that, that you sometimes just forget. Um, and on GitHub, basically there's also, we have like active interaction with all um, new people using Matrat. So you see people are reporting bugs, um, asking questions and so on. Sometimes it's myself, sometimes it's other people. Um, so um, there's like really, 
um, um, some interaction already. There's also a discussion section, which is not shown yet here, where people can uh, start discussions. Not that widely used yet because it's new on GitHub, but maybe it will be in the future. Um, okay, so maybe a little bit about who are the people besides me and um, Hans Peter, who I highlighted here because he's kind of quite uh, silent during this presentation. So you see him once more, and because he made such major contributions to Matrat. Um, initialized was it by Mark Bangert, um, who was the uh, previous group leader of radiotherapy optimization and by Eduardo Cisternas. That's why they are highlighted. Um, and now basically I am continuing it with many people from DKFC, some people from HIT also um, work with it and, and supported us, um, also external advisors that were quite involved also in the developments at DKFC like many years ago, in a sense on the, on the other and in-house systems and so on. And also this, lead, this, this list is really not complete. So if someone like has made active contributions and is not mentioned here, um, this is like really what I, what I pieced together quite quickly. There's like a lot more alumni also, I think. And um, this list is, I think, complete, but here like there might be, should be an additional point of people who have already started to externally contribute. So that's just that you know um, who are the people behind it. Um, yes. So if you want to hear about the main features of Matrat, like the most basic one, which I introduced already, and I will go into a little bit more detail here, you can read the paper that um, basically we wrote in 2017. So you find it on in the medical physics journal, it's open access, so you can read it um, free of charge, don't have to buy a subscription. And in more detail, that is now for the advanced users who already have like a good medical physics, maybe radiotherapy background, so you know what we use. Um, when you want to see if it makes sense for you to, for example, do research with it. Um, basically, like these well-established algorithms we use um, for photon, proton, and carbon ions are so-called pencil beam algorithms that basically use pre-computed or pre-measured data in, in, in water um, um, to, to compute those, um, scale it to the patient's anatomy in a sense. Um, so these are the names. So um, you can, I think, if you are familiar with it, you will figure out what it means. Um, for photons, we can do sequencing with collimators. We can factor in biology of protons and carbon ions to some extent. So that's um, already there. As I said, we have the machine files. So we have patient data. That's this court data set. It's also an open access data set. Um, you can import your own data and do some experiments um, on it. And yes, regarding the machine data, there's data for a photon linear accelerator. So that's one of these machines that have the electron waveguide and then um, create photons in a tungsten target, which then gets collimated um, um, and sequenced to, to have photon irradiation. And basically we have a generic proton and carbon machine, which means they work with idealized assumptions, um, but we are also able to, um, to Get generate the space data for real machines, um, but we can't give this out. We cannot like put data that mimics the hit machine on the repository. So this is general. For example, the beams are uh, like so. That's kind of the assumptions. The energy spectrum is Gaussian or or, or, or whatsoever. So this is like simplified data, but um, it is possible to create base data for your own machine. Um, and Yes, we have like inverse planning. Quite recently, the optimization interface optimization interface changed. So you can do physical dose optimi optimization and direct aperture optimization. That's something quite advanced here. Um, so I won't go into detail. You can factor in the biology, the, not only in the dose calculation, but also in the optimization based on RBE weighted dose or, or the biological effect, namely the exponent in the linear quadratic model. Yes, you can script, so you can write code or you can use the graphical user interface. So we have like this duality here where you go through the treatment planning workflow, you can script, write code, look at the variables, or you can just do this from the graphical user interface. And at any point, that's like a nice feature of MATLAB, I would say you can just switch and like after this step, 
check where are you in the code and 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 what variables do you have now in the workspace so that's quite nice for for education it only works if you're not using the standalone because the standalone just gives you the user interface so the standalone limits you basically to this part okay so for the inverse dose optimization like the actual process for finding a suitable dose distribution and suitable machine parameters um, as i said before we have interfaced an external optimizer that is also open source we have also um, 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 we can also use the the fmincon optimizer from matlab um, so that's an option and basically we solve a non-linear constraint optimization problem here and we have like a very big set of objectives and constraints you can choose it's still not everything that's available in the clinic so in the clinic you might have they, they might sound different if you have had access to a system it, it might be a different um, objective you might have completely different ways of planning but as i said we want to give people a basic set a basic set of algorithms to work, work with we don't want to implement every state-of-the-art algorithm into MATRAD. Okay, so since I also said you, yeah, we use generic machine data data, and this as well as like the algorithms are these pencil beam algorithms. Is anything I do with uh, Matrad even real? Does this resemble what is happening in a clinical system? And if you read the 2017 paper, I can shortly answer um, this question with uh, to a large extent, yes. So um, given the Zungo Siemens system for planning that was used at HIT. Um, I think now they, they they kind of switching to Ray Station. I'm not completely sure. I don't want to say wrong things here. But um, basically, Matrat is really able to produce nearly the same dose given the same settings and using, of course, the machine that that is uh, that mimics the, the HIT data. So in principle, we can really um, do the same stuff. You see, therefore, the carbon ions there, there were some differences. Um, I think Hans Peter might be able to comment more on where they come from, but they are mostly in the low dose region here. Um, um, and and, uh, and not that relevant. In, in a sense, our curves, the, the red ones are much right, even look a little bit smoother. It might just be that the simulations that, that were done there were a little bit noisy um, to begin with. Okay, so a little bit about calculation times. This is kind of particularly important for 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 all the participants because you will not like when you when you have a treatment planning system, it will hopefully run on a somewhat powerful computer, um, and 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 um, now you when you participate, you will maybe. Um, like do it on your laptop or or like uh, like a not so powerful workstation. Um, so you see that when your treatment planning problem problems become really large. So let's say you have seventy two photon beams, or you use um, you have a lot of um, variables like these terms. I will explain them tomorrow. Um, you can get into some restrictions regarding how much memory you use. So this is good to to um, to 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 be reminded during the tutorial, so you don't start to plan with uh, ten carbon beams and then wonder when when your um, computer gives up. We have like the standard version of MATRAD somehow um, like tunes down the resolution now in the newest release and so on. So it should work also on a on on most of the laptops, but there might, you might run into difficulties. The treatment planning problem is not the most like um, um, low demanding problem. So basically, what we will do will be the simplest problem, and this will already be quite challenging for some of your machines. And this is also a reason that I want to directly say that we will not look at in the tutorials the most difficult problems that you can put because they just won't work on the average computer. Like for example, robust planning where you need scenarios, then you have like 10 times the, the, the storage needed and so on. So that's just um, for you to be a little bit aware of not overdoing it during the hands-on. Um, but you see that with the times in general, 
we are always in the minutes region. So that's, um, that's doable. So those calculation times and optimization times are always in the region of minutes. So um, that's, that's, um, that's a good indicator that, that uh, we will manage to have a nice um, um, practical session or like nice practical sessions. Okay, so just that you get the first feeling of, of how MATLAB looks like, this is the user interface. So you see there is some, um, some, um, some settings that you can do. It's all quite raw, so it, it's not like as controlled as the commercial system. That is another reason why we like to have such an open source system. You do not, do not need to implement every safeguard that you need to use in a clinical product. So the settings can be quite raw and you can play around with, you can, you can in a sense hack it. So, but it allows to, to do all, all the um, general treatment planning workflow, or let's say, say most of it. Okay, so I see I only have five minutes left. And so I will like skip a lot of this information that is more technical. It, I just put it into the presentation so um, that when I upload it into the Indico system that um, people can read up a little bit more about it. So if you're interested, if you're a little bit like more an advanced user, so what we have, for example, just really quickly um, in the latest release that we will work with, um, as I said, we can change the resolution of the calculation to make it faster and more memory efficient, but less accurate, of course. Um, like the optimization interface has been reworked. So if you're interested in, in writing new objectives and constraints, you can do this. But it is also automatically tested when we do changes to the code, which does unfortunately not mean that everything is super stable. It's still, it's still a research um, um, system. It's not, it, we don't have like 50 people um, um, testing it. So basically all, all of you using it now is the biggest test that, that Madrat kind of ever had. So um, there will be crashes, there will be things that, there will be errors, uh, sometimes things that seem to be weird, but that's just the nature. It's a research software that is developed by a few people and not a company that has testers in, in, in the hundreds. Um, yes. So regarding the dose calculation, we also have now interfaces to Monte Carlo engines. We won't look at this because it just takes too long to calculate Monte Carlo doses, but that's just um, for, for completeness. Um, yes, that's just how Monte Carlo doses look like. I won't go into detail here. Um, um, this is also for completeness. If you're interested in what we are doing with uh, Matrat, we're looking at new optimization techniques, do some um, classical software development. So if someone's interested or thinks, oh, I really want to contribute, maybe there's like uh, something among these points that, that you would be interested in to, to contribute. Um, Yes, there's also primary examples like just to complete this um, of, of, of contributions and branches where we develop new features. So if you like on the last slide now are interested in contributing, you can look on these branches here that are listed there um, and, and um, check them out if you're interested to, to, to contribute something. Okay, so two minutes left. Um, I have, I can do a, get, get a little bit of overtime. Don't so, get stressed, uh, mm -hmm. take your time. We have the evaluation form after, but we yes, can do it later. But I still have slides, so we have to yeah, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so like just to give you examples of projects that are currently ongoing. So you see what we are doing. And I know this was mentioned um, this morning with mixed modality or like mixing um, beams. So I thought, why not just putting it in the presentation? Um, because we are actually doing this at the moment. Um, a PhD student, um, Amit Bannon, is researching this, um, actually writing his thesis at the moment and soon submitting. So he basically investigated um, of how we can optimally combine uh, um, photon and carbon ions in infiltrative diseases where you have in glioblastomas, you have like this region, this infiltrated CTV region, which has healthy and, and cancerous tissue in it. And so can we use biological properties of photons and carbon ions to, to, um, to shape the carbon dose differently that, than you would do, for example, in the first trivial approach where you just plan them separately. So plan them together and then you achieve different results. I'm not going into detail, but the nice thing about doing this in Madrid is 
that he has implemented it in Madrid and basically then a second student, um, Martina, she could just come and do like a follow-up project there, um, use the same code. Um, um, and it's quite easy then to start training uh, for Madrid and so on. So that's quite nice in doing research um, projects with that. Something else um, like an older project, um, um, which was basically um, done in 2015, 16, is uh, robust optimization. So using multiple images um, to find, uh, to optimize the dose to be robust against all anatomy variations. So that's an interesting uh, project and also a good example for creating a new feature, namely voxel-wise worst case optimization that was then brought to Madrid, further refined by Hans um, Peter and, and uh, is now on the development branch and probably soon to be integrated into, into uh, the main version, like maybe the next next release, who knows. Um, also, of course, we have the master classes that has their first successful stress test in 2019 and 2021. And now like this huge stress test with all of you. Um, um, so I think so far it has been quite, um, quite a success. And it's also a nice example for how to, how to educate and, and, and outreach to people using, using Madrid. So in conclusion, what did I tell you? Madrid is an open source treatment planning tool code with focus on research and education. It's used within internal and external research projects. Um, it can do dose calculation and treatment planning. Um, for photons, protons, helium on a research branch and carbon ions, it includes the data for that. Um, there's active development regarding Monte Carlo and new modalities, optimization te techniques. Um, and we also try to continuously professionalize the development of the software. Of course, that's not super easy in a research environment, but um, we, are, we are trying. So um, like automatic testing, and so on is, is already a good step forward there. And we will go into detail there later and um, how to get going with Madrid in principle. If you are, especially if you are, you go to our, you go to our page on GitHub, um, you can get there visiting madrat.org. I think you just need to write a small R. Um, I, I think that might be a little bit off. Um, you download the standalone or even better the code, or even better you familiarize with Git and clone because that prepares you for contributing later and, and, and so on. Um, you check out the user interface and the code. As I said, we have this duality between scripting and user interface. We will use this for all of you who have a MATLAB installation. We will use this um, to, to, to explain some of the stuff that is going on behind the scenes. Um, so if you check out the code, these are your favorite functions in the beginning to work with. Um, um, you have many examples in the examples folder if you're interested in different uh, modalities and you have a wiki that helps you with technical stuff. Um, of course, when you start working with Matrat, you might need some more help than just the wiki and what's in the examples. So then you can ask for help or join the community on GitHub and then use it for your research. So that's like the workflow, how it would work if you basically find Madrid and you want to start doing your radiotherapy research um, with it for, for later, um, like for the tutorials we do this week, we have like a dedicated session to explain to you how to get Madrid going um, for, the, for the courses um, in half an hour. So, um, so um, there's like more details then. Okay, so here's like kind of a, summary of everything I told you and like a little bit more detail on what Matrat can do about sequences, for example, what objectives and constraints we have um, and so on, what formats we can read or export also. So um, this might be quite interesting to some of you and with this I would like to um, thank you all. I don't know if there are so many questions right now or um, because it was just telling you what's there. Yeah. All the technical questions will hopefully be answered during the lectures yeah. um, and the installation session later. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nicholas, for this concise introduction and overview. Uh, I think there is a question from uh, Marco Puglia, who is uh, actually on Zoom. Uh, Marco, you are still there? 
Yes, I'm here. Yes, yes. please go ahead with your question. The, the question was, uh, uh, can you import uh, contouring or can you do contouring uh, in MATLAB uh, directly? Um, no, we can't do contouring. The reason for this is in a sense that there's like a lot of open source software that, that allows you to do that. So the contouring part, we basically outsource to toolkits like MITK or SIR, or there, there are like few others um, that, that can do this. RT, a slice of RT or how it is called is also a good tool to do this. Um, so basically really focus. To MATLAB. Hmm? Sorry, once more, please. And you can import contours made externally into MATLAB. Yes, that's yes. possible. So as an RT struct, um, for example, as a DICOM RT struct together with the DICOM CT, you can do it. Or you can you can use um, um, binary formats. And I mean, I always want to stress this, that, that MATLAB is basically not to be treated as a final product that can do things or can do can't do things. So what Matwat can do largely depends on um, on 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 the willingness to to maybe write a small piece of code or something like this to import some data. Mm -hmm. So we try to do it for the main format like Artistruct um, um, and and Dicom City, but we don't want to spend our time on doing basically like like it like a commercial vendor would do it like here is everything you need it's it's more for for yeah. um, basically just um can you hear me first yes yeah okay so what matra cannot do or like we do not cover all the pre-treatment planning steps for instance as image fusion and also contouring as Nick just mentioned so these are things that we do not cover with because it's covered with so many other tools and um... okay thank you very much okay there are some questions that i'm now going through for an impt plan with matra do you use different beam sizes based on the energy of the beam so this question i don't i'm not sure if we understand it completely but matra will basically look at the tumor um and create um, a layout so it will create a scanning grid. Matrat does IMPT, so it will create a scanning grid. And um, depending what's in the base data and what spacing of pencil beams or beamlets you choose, it can use different foci and so on. Um, so there is some functionality there. Um, it depends on what your data offers. So in the generic data, we have one focus. So it's not like, it's not mimicking an, an, an machine. So we have one focused, one beam focused um, um, for each energy that is tabulated. And that's what we use. Is it possible to change beam sizes in Uh I think you probably mean also the, the focusing of the beam so, yeah. if you have your own machine, yes. Yeah. Your exactly. own machine data. In principle, that the code is written that way that it's possible to use different beam sizes, but it basically depends on if you provide it in the base data. If you have yes. like if you create a, a dedicated base data with different beam foci, then it's possible. Yeah. Yes. The next thing is it possible to implement spot reduction, energy layer reduction? Yes, it's definitely possible. I have not implemented a cool spot reduction or energy layer reduction um, algorithm. What I did is, is change the spacing of the energy layers or, or removing spots below a threshold and re-optimizing or stuff like this. So, but that's the thing, like since Matrat is open source code, you can just implement uh, whatever you want into there. You can change the optimizer, include a next post-processing step and so on. So. That's that there's no limitations um, um, to this. And also question four. So if you have like your own strategy on how to generate the beam geometry and your own data for like want to generate your own data, that's what Matrat is for. It's not there to basically do this for you, but to give you the possibility to, to implement it. So if you have something that you really want to try out and you want to research, um, then you have to do the work yourself. Um, so 
and uh, so it's it's Matlab is there for you to enable you to do the work that you want to do. Not basically, I want to do this. Can you do it for me, or can it do it for me? It's like really gives the minimum um, 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 data and minimum algorithm for for doing the the major steps. But if you have something more advanced, um, then you can do it yourself based on what Matlab offers. So could we get some support from you if you want some additional feature in Matlab? So in principle, you can always write on GitHub and ask, yeah, what, what is about this feature? Why don't you have it? And then it might be a feature that is cool for everyone and that we also think, oh, that might be really nice. And then we will say, okay, let's do it together. But if it's basically something that we see only benefiting like one particular use case, um, then we need to say, yeah, like feel free to do it. Um, feel free to implement it. If you have questions, we will help you. But we cannot basically follow every feature request that 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 comes across. It also, I have to say, this it always depends on how you engage um, on GitHub because we have a lot of like sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But we have a lot of requests and questions and bug reports we need to look into. And there are questions of this type that basically say. Why can Matra do this? Please do, do it for me. And there I can guarantee you that it probably will not happen. If you basically say, oh, I tested this and this and there's an error and maybe we can do this and can I do something, then it's more likely that, 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 it, that it would happen. It basically depends, and it, Matra really depends on interaction and, and community there as well. Um, could you list the data formats that can be uploaded in Matra? I did this on the last slide. So basically that's what you can do. Um, DICOM is the, the most promising one. Everything else might need a little bit of tuning um, also from the programmatical side. But with DICOM, you should come far. DICOM CT, DICOM RT struct, DICOM RT plan works to some extent if you're willing to tune the machine. Um, and RT dose can be is like the main things. Um, and there are some other formats like NERD files, VTK, you know, MHA files, and so on. Um, so, but this was on the list before. I think there was also, a, uh, you overlooked question six, um, if we can provide a comparison um, of the number of energy layers and the number of spots generated for a particular IMPT plan with Matrat compared to a commercial treatment plan and software. Um, it depends. Yeah, exactly. Um, it depends if the treatment plan, the commercial treatment planning system, what kind of reduction steps it does. Um, um, so Matrat, from the generic base data, if you leave all parameters the same, it chooses, let's say, a reasonable spot grid of five millimeter spacing that might be more than some other that, that you will use on, on a patient, but this also depends. Um, and the energy layer spacing might be different, but as I said, it depends on the site, it depends on choice of, of the planner, what to do, like dense grid, sparser grid, and so on. So. We are not there to answer like these questions. Basically, if you want to figure it out, you you can do it with Matrat. Gives you basically the tools. Yeah. Or you have a look back at the table you provided. Where we benchmarked or basically the performance yes. of Matrat for um, specific use cases. And, and here we also had, um, yeah, a couple of thousands of, of spots. And the runtimes were in the minutes, but this has to be treated with caution since it depends on many factors in the dose calculation. Yes. So, um, question eight Do you have some free recourse to learn about basic con concepts? Not for MATLAB. Like we say, it's not our, um, our um, responsibility to also teach MATLAB. I'm always also a strong advocate of, of learning these things by yourself, because if you start looking into a programming language and, and you figure out courses in the internet and you start doing examples by yourself, that's the way you learn a programming language. Um, in my my experience, at least. Some people might, might learn it differently, but there are like many courses and so on. So starting using MATLAB is, is basically, we leave that up to you. For Matrat, as I said, there are a lot of examples. Um, so these basically give you code snippets and examples on how to use the functions in different settings and how to configure the plans. It's always best to start with them um, or start with the matrat.m script. 
There's um, also um, one webinar that explains a little bit. It's a little bit updated, um, but we might maybe be able to use the recordings here to, to update this. Um, so that's also um, something that we that we can do in the in the um, that that we will do in the hands-on sessions to learn a little bit about how to use Matrat and and um, so that's basically um, what we have at the moment. There might be more of that in the future, um, but I think um, starting off with the examples, engaging on on GitHub. Um, um, checking out the technical documentation in the wiki, that's the that's the places to, to start with. It's, it's more like learning by doing. It's not that we basically provide um, a, a four weeks uh, course that teaches you everything in MATLAB and MATLAB. The question nine, I think, um, as I said before, MATLAB is not as powerful as other commercial softwares. Um, Point, that's that's point number one because um, as I said we are not there to create a treatment planning system that like everyone can can use for real treatment actually and I stretch this Matrat is never to be used for real treatments that's otherwise you would need to comply with all the regulations for developing a medical product and then Matrat wouldn't have the benefit of being so accessible so um, that's the situation there so it can produce accuracy like systems but modern systems they always thrive for the latest development to be included having the most efficient code so you cannot compete with that and it doesn't make sense to try so if i want to write um, a, like a such a powerful system i would join um, a company that that does this and and start programming on my niche algorithm there with uh, hundreds of other programmers so um, it's not as powerful, but we don't attempt this. We just want to people to 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 use these algorithms to implement the core research, like mm -hmm. combining modalities, um, investigating new biological models, and so on. That's the goal here. And Madrat has been cited, like in I think. 90 papers so far since the 2070 paper so if you want to see how it how it works and how it helps researchers just just read those papers and 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 so then just that that gives you like the 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 um the idea there can we choose between sfud and I, impt and uh, nicholas maybe we leave the rest of the questions uh, after the next session Yes, if you need the, yeah. like you need the evaluation form. All right. And yes. Just very fast, Damir, maybe you can stop sharing. And um, uh, first of all, um, we need to give you the Zoom link uh, where you can join for the hands-on uh, session. So please, uh, oh, this is... Uh, um, yes. Try to join this uh, uh, Zoom uh, room for the hands-on session, for the installation, actually. This is important so that we have uh, better interaction. The ones that uh, feel that they don't need to join, they can continue on webcast. And uh, uh, Iris is going to show very fast now uh, how to uh, do the evaluation form. So the link is down here, it's uh, shorter. So you can click in this um, uh, link. If there is any problem with accessing the evaluation form, so Iris is going to show it, uh, sharing screen. It is quite important uh, to fill uh, the evaluation form because this uh, helps us to improve even for tomorrow. Yeah? Not to speak about the next uh, schools. Okay, so the first question will be an introductory question. Uh, so we need to know uh, what's your position. So there are a, some a variety of options here. For example, in my case, I'm a master student, so I can click the master student. And then proceed to the next question, which is from how did you first hear about the heavy ion therapy masterclass school? You can write and you have also another selection here and you can also add, add, add your comments. Next question will be in general terms, uh, the valuation from one and up to five uh, regarding the how interesting and useful do you find the school? 
then we have, uh, if, if your answer previously was uh, below the three number, then you can briefly explain why in order to help us improve and uh, be better in the next uh, master class in schools. Next one will be, what do you think uh, was the best aspect of the heavy ion therapy master class school? So if there is a textbook here, you can answer and write your comments. Following up, we have, what will you change or improve about the heavy ion therapy master class school? So we have uh, some examples in the bracket, structure, length, organization, speakers, and more. Feel free to add your comments. Well, then we have, this school was very helpful to improve my knowledge in heavy ion therapy. You can yeah, select yes or no, obviously. And then you have, uh, will you come to another heavy ion therapy master class school? So to let us know also about uh, your interest. Then you can also add uh, some more remarks or suggestions that you would like to convey to improve uh, similar schools and courses in the future. And uh, any ad additional information regarding uh, the whole school, you can add it there in the comment section uh, on the ninth question. Then you, after you have completed all of the, the above questions, you can just uh, click the button here, which will be actually to submit your form. It's in Greek here, and then you're ready to go. So we now proceed to the coffee break. Yeah, let's have a small uh, break uh, and uh, be back uh, at um, uh, 16 uh, 